perhaps this might be the actual most severe case in Canada that's been just completely opened up and unlocked. Hategate.ca or just Hategate. Remember that because it's investigative journalists and a combination of a lot of different people, a lot of different teams that have uncovered the truth about the anti-hate network here in Canada, why the RCMP invoked the Emergencies Act during the Freedom Convoy, and the weird use of social media and the radical leftist to basically attack neutral people or people on the right or conservatives or just anyone that doesn't see the world from their perspective. Welcome back to another video, everybody. This is going to be a pretty informative one. We have a lot of things to cover and I will try my best to credit everyone down below. For time's sake, a lot of things I will be summarizing to the best of my ability. There is over thousands of documents to go over. We won't be doing that. We're going to be looking at different videos and different highlighted points within those document so i encourage you to stick around for the whole video so that you actually have the entire story because there's a lot of information you're going to share this to your friends you're going to, want to share this to facebook groups you want to get this message out this is this is the video to share ladies and gentlemen i'd like to encourage you to give a like subscribe if you haven't already turn those post notifications on as well as i'd like to thank today's sponsor I want to thank today's sponsor, Private Internet Access. We've teamed up together and PIA is willing to offer my audience 83% off by using code SUNSHINE. Now, here in Canada with Justin Trudeau in power, not only is he kind of like a communist dictator, but he's also censoring the internet, which is why you need a VPN to encrypt yourself and be able to bounce around different geolocations to really mask your not only digital footprint, but to mask your identity because right now it's hard enough as it is to even get the news that's right bill c18 prevents users everyday people such as yourself myself from accessing simple information that is our freedom of rights to information here in canada if you go on facebook you currently can't even see canadian news it's wild and who knows what's next maybe he's going to ban everything with google maybe here on youtube so you need to cover yourself and protect yourself with a vpn such as private internet access and what better way to do that here in canada than having 83 percent off the link for that is down in the description below as well as the pinned comment use code sunshine with private internet access for 83 percent off thank you private internet access for sponsoring today's video by now i'm pretty sure we can all agree that the freedom convoy was a political weapon the, the liberals the rcmp everyone on you know the other side of things that was basically freaking out over what's happening they tried their best and obviously succeeded to turn this into a clown show we know the convoy was peaceful we know no one meant any harm we know people were there to stand up against the mandates and it was this like community thing and the, the, it seemed like the whole world had that type of support in canada dropped the ball justin trudeau dropped the ball like no one else ever could the the type of uh, solutions that he came to with the police brutality and just the that level of intimidation and law enforcement presence was not needed here's what the cover page looks like for hategate you can find i'm going to try and link it down below literally hategate.ca so right now we have documents that reveal shocking RCMP failures in the investigation of Diagalon. Now there's a lot of lawyers that have come together, a lot of different people that have come together to gather all of these sources uh, and basically put together this really intense story. So we're gonna we're gonna look at the story right now in different parts of it. For those who don't know, Diagalon is the made up country that has a flag that goes. Th diagonally sideways and the leader of it is a goat it was founded by jeremy mckenzie who testified at the um, emergencies act public inquiry while he was in jail he's been a political prisoner due to his uh involvement in in diagonal and how it was perceived by law enforcement and it, it's just it, it it's been horrible the amount of um like stepping on that he's he's had to endure from the police from the government uh, yeah they've debanked him and his wife i believe it's just been absolutely horrible so let's take a look at the prologue here a public safety minister makes false and alarmist comments in a press conference when pressed for details he directs media 
to law enforcement who scrambled to produce evidence where there is none. An officer is tasked to produce a key briefing for top officials to help government decision making in only 15 minutes. Intelligence analysts taking cues from anonymous Twitter trolls involved in criminal harassment. Citizens' personal information is eagerly shared with international spy agencies, even as internal reports circulate acknowledging there is no evidence of terrorist activity. An entire country's intelligence uh, departments r- relying on a single source, a source that banks on the questionable judgment calls of an <clears throat> inexperienced, ideological motivated act activists cosplaying online as Nazis and Russian models to gather data and donations. A source that cloaks its researchers in anonymity and refuses to disclose their credentials, conflicts of interest or track record, even as they wildly quoted, even as they're widely quoted in the media as subject matter experts. Welcome to Canada. We don't believe credible people. We believe online Trolls. It's very weird. So let's look at the beginning. The smear campaign begins. In February 2020, Jeremy posted a lecture featuring Omar Khadr. He considered it a travesty for Dalhousie University to promote an enemy combatant in any circumstance. The ferry he took to Halifax was named after Christopher, Christopher Stanix, his former roommate who was killed in Afghanistan. Freelance videographer... Peter McIsaac was covering the event. Uh, Jeremy McKenzie or Jeremy provided a passionate two minute soundbite. I have to be here to say this because many of the people in my platoon who were killed by Omar Cotter's little club aren't here to say that anymore. They're all dead. So I guess I'm the bad guy now. If that's how it's going to be, then that's how it's going to be. The video gar- the video garnered five million views on YouTube. And Jeremy McKenzie, that's kind of where it began for him. But in order to understand who Omar Qatar is, we have to watch this video. Nice day. It is a really nice day. I thought it was going to be warmer. He looks pretty relaxed, but Omar Qatar might just be the most divisive figure in Canada right now. Let me ask you about the apology. Why does that matter to you? Uh, I think it... uh, It restores a little bit my uh, reputation here in Canada. The government is trying to minimize the damage to its reputation with this deal, taking great pains to distance itself from Cotter, the young boy building roadside bombs in Afghanistan, like the ones that killed Canadian soldiers. This deal, government ministers say, is the result of what happened after at Guantanamo Bay, including his interrogation by Canadian officials. The Supreme Court of Canada has said clearly and unequivocally that that behavior on the part of those Canadian officials was wrong. And you may want to dismiss the rule of law and the Constitution, but if you do that, you are fundamentally undermining the integrity of the country. And perhaps an acknowledgement of how sensitive this all is, no one actually said the word sorry. Why is that? The... um, uh, the apology uh, was issued in, uh, in written form uh, and it was uh, prepared uh, in accordance with the, uh, with the agreement between the parties. Even that written apology itself only says Canadian officials may have played a role in relation to his ordeal abroad. The terms of Cotter's deal also mean the government isn't publicly talking about the amount he received, though CBC News has confirmed it's $10.5 million. But no attempt to downplay will temper the outrage some feel over this deal. It's not just wrong, it's disgusting. This additional payment of taxpayers' dollars is a slap in the face to the men and women in uniform, to all those who have lost loved ones on the battlefield. Then there's the widow of the soldier killed. She and another soldier injured in the attack successfully sued Cotter in the U.S. and won damages of more than $130 million. They've seen none of it. If Omar Cotter is truly sorry for what he has done, that money would be given directly to the family of Sergeant Spear. Now, the lawyer for the Spear family did tell some media outlets that they want the money that's been given to Omar Cotter, but some legal experts say that that will be an uphill battle. Catherine Cullen, CBC News, Ottawa. Obviously a very horrible situation. And the fact that um, that money never went to the appropriate people really hurt 
a lot of individuals. Back to how this involves Jeremy McKenzie. So Gavin McKines saw the clip and reached out for an interview. McKines is the co-founder of Vice Media, formal Rebel News, uh, Rebel Media correspondent, and Proud Boys founder, listed as a ter- terrorist entity in Canada. He was the only media figure willing to talk to Jeremy. Uh, willing to talk, Jeremy sees the opportunity to share his message with a wider audience. Within a few days, <clears throat> an account with the username Yellow Vest Canada Exposed published a detailed. ARC collective blog titled Jeremy McKenzie, Nova Scotia-based extremist YouTuber spreads hate. He was described as having extremist views, including that he regularly espouses anti-Semitic conspiracies, parrots Holocaust denial lines, and disparages Jews and Muslims. There were multiple references and comparisons to... Okay, so that's kind of where it began for him, was, this, from my understanding, was a speaking out against... Omar Cotter. So how does that affect the Freedom Convoy? Well, ever since he started speaking about about Omar Cotter, he was under the radar, especially since there was certain publications uh, by extreme radical left wing, either, you know, um, troll Twitter accounts or left media. And the media really played a massive, massive factor in this. Jeremy McKenzie was under the radar. So when he attended the Freedom Convoy, that type of uh, surveillance on him followed him. But he knew that. So let's look at the actual articles um, that the lawyers founded uh, in, in this hate gate publication. Freedom Convoy. Jeremy learned about the Freedom Convoy through social media hype. He saw aerial drone footage of trucks driving from Western Canada and concluded this would be a big deal. Plus, he considered it an opportunity to get together with friends and escape the monotony of lockdowns, which for so many Canadians, that's exactly what it was. Hey, man, we've been locked down. This is crazy. Let's all get together and basically have a peaceful street party. He encouraged his followers to be on their best behavior, mindful the Diagalon fan base would be under the microscope. So he knew it was coming. <clears throat> there was no doubt that Jeremy was flagged. He remembers seeing reconnaissance posts on the rural road outside Ottawa. Um, they were parked for hours, even days at a time. One night, the farm dogs were barking uncontrollably. Jeremy figured there were probably cops surveying the building. In the morning, sure enough, he found foot traffic in the snow and empty coffee cups and cigarette butts. Jeremy knew that everything he was... Um, Jeremy knew that everything he said was being watched, but worried that uh, only sarcasm was taken at face value and earnest statements disregarded as red herrings. He was not paranoid, but rather genuinely concerned for his safety. The escalations were scary in his mind. The intense focus on his podcast uh, uh, by police should not have happened in any sane or rational world. So it was not a leap to imagine physical danger. The law envisioned that they were basically forming some sort of militia instead of just like a guy's group having this troll type of made up country run by a literal goat. I think the goat is on cocaine or something like that. Um, it, it, it's a, clearly a meme, but the media needed some sort of the media and the government needed some sort of scapegoat. And for those who don't remember, this was actually mentioned in the House of Commons by like Jagmeet Singh and other major politicians. You know, Diagalon is an extremist group and there's you know terrorists at the Freedom Convoy. It got blown way out of proportion. And the reason it got blown way out of proportion is you have people like this. On global, this is global news's official account spreading videos and messages like this, adding fuel to the fire. You can see the likes and dislikes 299 likes, 2.1 thousand dislikes. So obviously, the people see through this, but the message still goes out there on massive platforms and it just adds more fuel to the fire. And it's not. It's not correct. It's not nice things. Leadership front runner Pierre Poliev came under fire this past weekend after an image of him shaking hands with Jeremy McKenzie, the founder of a group known as Diagalon, emerged. Now, Poliev says he shakes hands with tens of thousands of people and he can't possibly background check them all. But what exactly is Diagalon? Basically, it's a group of live streamers that made up a joke country based on the states and provinces that at the time didn't have mask mandates. It started as a meme. Their pretend vice president is an evil goat. But during their hours long live streams, Diagalon members have warned about a looming societal collapse, which they blame on the government. And they'll call for something to be done about this without saying what. 
This is what worries extremism experts, especially after what appeared to be diagonal patches were found alongside a bunch of weapons the RCMP seized in Coots, Alberta earlier this year. Because while this group says they're just joking around, the experts say followers might take the warnings about society to heart and decide to do something about it. Read more at globalnews.ca. No, experts do not say that, and there is no risk of that happening. And from Greg Wycliffe on YouTube, we're just going to watch the first minute. Sorry? Are you being tracked by the feds? Uh, no, I, I am uh, work. I'm here on uh, Putin's orders. I work for uh, KGB, FSB. It's why him here and will have make this happen uh, to disrupt the mighty military of Canada to, 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 to make a much easier uh, overtaking of Ukraine for uh, the Russian people. Right, so this whole thing was organized by Russia. No, That's correct. No. Have not been paid. Uh, Putin promised to pay. I am waiting. We are here with the one and only Jeremy McKenzie. How's Hello, going? how are you? <laughs> you are there you go. So he's, he's a funny guy, and a lot of these lads are funny, but if you've ever wanted to know the real truth of why the Freedom, or why the <clears throat> uh, Emergencies Act was invoked on the Freedom Convoy, it's because of... Diaglon and the narrative that Diaglon was painted as and all of the propaganda, all of the anti-hate networks bias and the um, you citing sources from troll accounts like brand new Twitter accounts and a what's supposed to be an established organization such as the anti-hate network would take those sources and cite them and say, hey, this is credible evidence. This is, it's a brand new account, but it's, you know, it's credible because it fits their narrative. And this is the state of Canada that we're in. And I, I do want to take this moment right now to say that I don't condone bad behavior and, and saying bad things. And so just because that we're, we're taking a look and examining a lot of um, the Diagalon and uh, what happened. It's it, it's not supposed to say, hey, these people are the best people in the world and that they're saints. There's a lot of things that everyone is guilty of, of saying in their past that they probably regret, you know, dark humor, whatever it is. So I'm not defending any of those. I'm just taking a look at the objective reality of the Freedom Convoy and Diagolons Association and how the anti-hate network literally propagandized this, uh, weaponized this entire um, meme uh, creation and invoked a war measures act in Canada, like the, the highest tippity top thing that you could possibly do. It's like might as well send nukes and blow up a country because of a meme. Like that's kind of the equivalent. At least that's how it feels sometimes. So I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Um, if you want to read the entire hate gate, um, PDF, then you can do so by finding it at hategate.ca and I encourage you to do so. There's also a donation page there if you would like to donate for the hard work that the um, that the lawyers, that the investigative journalists have all put together. Um, I'll do my best to credit everyone who was a part of this video down below. So if you want to click on their socials, feel free to do so there. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give a like and subscribe. Share this video if you haven't yet and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. If you want to support the channel financially, you can do so by checking out the merch shop linked right up there. Or if you want to do something for free, which is also absolutely acceptable and highly encouraged, you can subscribe right there. If you want to continue watching videos like this, you can do so by clicking or tapping right there to watch the next upcoming video. And if you want to watch a little bit of different content, but also Canadian stuff, you can do so by clicking right up there. That's my second channel, House of Canada, also known as the House of Commons Highlights. Thank Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.